episode 235, always awake, and we're all the way live. It's the review for your listening and viewing pleasure. What up, what up, man? It's your boy JB, man. Um, and of course, this man to my side is my brother from another mother. All right, that's my dog, Benny Blue, right there, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, welcome to episode 240. Who? 235, my God. Oh, okay. We're pushing it. 235. All right. On the JP and Benny Blue review, man, if you are new to us, we appreciate you being here. If you are an old head veteran showing up for the oh, umpteen thousandth time, we appreciate all your business. You can follow us at uh, JB and Benny Blue on all social media platforms. That's, yeah, yeah. TikTok's in there too. All right, yes. Benny's on there doing a couple dances here and there. You know, just to entertain the people, just to make sure that we keep this thing a little spice. All right, <laughs> without a doubt. So check us out, man. You know what I'm saying? We get back. We just follow us on our own individual Instagrams. Mine is at 73, KingJB73. And at Benny Blue Eyes always has been, always will be uh, at Benny Blue Eyes. You want to holler at us and listen to us in the Valley of the Sun, all right? We live stream at casualsports.com. All right, shout out to our boys, Ed Earl, Javon, all the homies, you know what I'm saying? The Money Making Mitch. Oh. Who has joined our podcast, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and of course, we can't forget about Sean McConnell, punk ass. Right? Oh. He's always ducking and dodging us, oh. like Floyd Mayweather was ducking fights back 15 years ago, right? So, <laughs> of course, you know what I'm saying? You check us out here in the Valley, man. That's how you do it yes. right there. You still want to hear our melodious voices, right? You want to hear our melodious voices, you know what I'm saying? JB and Benny Blue After Dark, you heard it, all right? One dollar, get there for BT you, uncut. all right? Yeah. One dollar, will get there for you. Patreon.com slash JB and Benny Blue. One dollar a month. Do I need to remind you people what you do with that dollar, right? You getting Lucy's from the store. You buy, you buy, you buying Lucy's from the store. You know what I'm saying? Fifty cent uh, Newports. You know what I'm saying? No, that no, no that's see, them, that's lots of a lot more than a dollar a month at the strip club. You know what I'm saying? That's about about fifty five hundred dollars a month for some of these cats out here. Oh my Anywhere God. go, give me that hot dollar. Patreon.com <laughs> slash JB and Blue. You can hear our voice in true podcast form. All right, check out our website where we have all of our merchandise of course Cardinal fans you can go and get 10% off of that bird gang all day unisex shirt we got hoodies we got shirts long sleeve short sleeve all that you know what I'm saying use promo code BG at checkout right to get 10% off your entire order right again jvnbw.com slash stove all right yeah I like that check me out on Tuesday nights right the night nice. before today right for the Burning Bridges podcast we live stream man you know what I'm saying shout out to the the, the, the at AAT sports underscore that's at Twitter and the at AAT birds it's all about the birds family of course if you're checking us out on YouTube that's the all so, so I'm gonna get it right the AAT <laughs> media sports media network and so it's we'll, just we'll, horrible. Re, we'll repost the shit we'll horrible, hook you up, right it's, 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 it's so we'll long of a name we gotta, we gotta figure out an acronym for that shit Right or something, you know what I'm saying? It's so long a name. People fall asleep saying that shit. Either way it goes, check me out, the Burning Bridges Podcast. Man, you know, sponsorship interviews, new music, uh, hate mail, love mail, uh, you know, anything else you want to send, right? We'll leave it at that. All right, JBNB Review at gmail.com. And yes, we do play music. All right, we played last last episode. Was reaction last uh, week, run it back. Yeah, that's right, run it back. You know what I'm saying? Great music, by the way. This kid is making good music, that's doing hard. great things, right? You can shout out, follow him on Instagram. What's his name again? A guy perks the amenity out of the desert. Perks and he the sent amenity us a new out of the song, desert. Which perks, we'll get that to you in a couple of weeks. We'll get you back on the reaction. So out of the desert via way of Buffalo, New York. Shout out to the mafia. You know we love our Bills mafia we around here. Mafia. All right, without a doubt. You know what I'm saying. So get with us again. JB and Billy Blue review at gmail.com. Uh, we do hit back. You know what I'm saying. Don't yes. think we out here stunting in front. We not. Yes. Yes. All right. Again, yes. episode two thirty five. We are right here, right now. All right. Yes, exactly. And yes, speaking sir. of not stunting in front on our people. Get with our guys, the young boys of Sweet Life and Zach and Cody, Valley Boys Association clothing. Go to valleyboysassociation.com and use code PODCAST22 for 20% off your order at checkout. And if you want to hold the strap, and I ain't talking discount, double check, it's timtobuy.com. Boy, that thing in your girl's drawer. Vehicle. Wow. Pause. <laughs> Text review to 505-444-7003, and Tim will get you into the car of your dreams, wherever you are in the nation, mm. or DM him at it's Tim Dubai on Instagram. All right. Coming up, you know, we got some week seven recap. The trade deadline, Dr. Bridges, is on November 4th. So we're going to do a little trade deadline predictor and, of course, some week eight picks. But, Dr. Bridges, we would be remiss if we uh, didn't talk about this. The MLB playoffs are in full swing. In fact, the World Series is starting between the Phillies and the cheating rat Houston Astros. 
But in order for them to get there, they needed to get past one team, and that <clears> team <throat> was JB's Yankees. So, Dr. Bridges, we're going to give you the floor is yours to officially bury the 2022 Yankees MLB season to the tune of, you guessed it, start spread the news. Damn it. So, so talk first to your fellow first, Yankee fans. First and foremost, I'd like to say congratulations, Yankees, on a great season. All right. Now, we had the best offensive player in baseball in Aaron Judge, right? I think he had right. finished with 62 or 63, right? Hey, Roger Maris's record. Beat Roger Maris's record, all right? So, again, the best offensive player in MLB this year, our very own Aaron Judge. 62, Money Making Dude, Mitchell. Thank, thank you for the stats, as always. So, um, first of all, outside of saying congratulations to my Yankees, second of all, I want to say shame on you New York Yankees fans mm -hmm. for being so goddamn ungrateful. Right? Excuse me. Being so goddamn ungrateful. We are not in a win now mode. Right? We don't have to win the World Series. We're playing good ball right now. And to me, we're missing a couple key pieces. Right? That's it. We're missing a couple decent hitters. Right? Because we did, we asked them to do some good things with the bat this year. But we're still missing a couple key pieces in that bullpen. Right? right. That's that. We're missing a couple key pieces in that bullpen. So, either way it goes. Yankees, great season. All right, I'm still waiting because it's going to eventually happen uh, to hear what the Strohs did this time because they swept my Yankees and all the offense we've had all year. We couldn't hit the ball for shit, right? So I'm still waiting to see exactly what kind of cheating they did to get where they at this time, all right? Now, I hate to say that, you know what I'm saying, because of who their skipper is, you know what I'm saying, I have a lot of respect for the man. But at the same time, hey, it's Yankees all day, bitch. So uh, with that being said, Yankees enjoy y'all season, right? I had a chance to go watch some of our young talent over in Mesa the other night. Uh, it was it was good to see. Cactus right? League. I'm a true Yankees fan, all right? You know what I'm saying? If you're telling me my young Yankees are playing, I'm there to see them, man. You know what I'm saying? So, and most definitely, I'll get to a couple games next year, right? But again, Yankees, great season, and go Phillies, all right? We have Phillies. Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper finally playing in the big game. Right, Jimmy, exactly. I gotta be honest. I think the bigger letdown was actually the Mets. I think the Mets had a lot more win behind their sails, and they really shit the bed, as the Mets do, as but you we, know, yeah. as the Yankees Mets, fans. Mets is gonna met. You know Mets gonna met. And how Mets about? And, and listen, I'm I'm out here in LA. How about the fucking Dodgers with a billion dollar payroll and doing it again, fucking off and tricking it off again? The Doyers, the Doyers, you know what I'm the Doyers, they did it again. All right, so whatever. Well, JB it has, is. You're right, man. has officially buried the uh, the uh, 2022 season for the Yankees. So we'll see. Uh, prediction: What do you, who do you think's winning the World Series and how many games? Phillies. Uh, it's gonna go the distance, All right? Phillies somebody, seven. So, somebody got to win by you know since out. Yeah, somebody got to win. You know, like by the margin. I'm saying I'm not gonna say Phillies in seven. I'm gonna say Phillies in six. Uh, I just really think that I, I think that again the Strohs, man. Like they they. Whatever reason, as soon as they see them pinstripes, they feel like they have to cheat, right? You know what I'm saying? And they did something. <laughs> I know they did something. I can feel it in my gut. They did something, right? And we'll we'll see here pretty soon when it comes out. So hanging on a help. trash can, strumming on the street light. I ain't gonna to the beats. I ain't gonna hold my breath, but you know what I'm saying? We go. It's gonna eventually come out. What happens in the dark eventually comes to the light. God damn it! All right, go we'll Phillies. See. Yeah, we'll see. Mitch, you're right. Mets, that's the more disappointing thing. Mets have the higher, higher payroll, 250 million. Mitch says Phillies in million. six. I say Phillies in six. I want the Phillies to win. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be the Astros in seven. But I would love to see the Phillies win because, God damn it, fuck the Astros. Like, straight fuck, up. Fuck, fuck the yeah. Astros. Fuck yeah. Like, Houston, we love you. You know we love you as a city, but damn it, no, fuck your squad. Yeah. No, we Astros. love you. All right. So that's enough goddamn MLB talk. We get to get to some shit right now with some week seven recap. And of course, we're going to start with the BG, who JB got a much needed dub <laughs> at home. The first one of the season, they beat the Saints 42 34, the first home win in 2022. But as the cameras caught one Kyler homework Murray screaming, and I quote, calm the fuck down to his coach, who looked like he had the deer in his headlights. Um, JB, they got the win. It was a much needed win, but do you feel like this is like delaying the inevitable between Cliff and Kyler and Cliff in general and the whole drama? Well, to see Kyler come with the passion, right? To be able to, you know what I'm saying? And they have a relationship. Let's, let's be clear, right? Cliff and Kyler have known each other for a long time, right? I mean, a long time. I think since Kyler was a junior in high school, some shit like that, right? 
There's no secret that Cliff is being a dickhead and he is being slow with the plays. One, right? We're getting the plays in at like 11 seconds till the end of the, the, the play clock every time, right? He is panicking, right? It's ever we see it, it's clear. So for Kyler to blow up like that, kid's a winner. He's a winner. All right, let's just get it clear. For all you Kyler doubters and haters, he's a winner, right? The kid wants to win. When you put him in a position to win, he's going to do that most of the time, right? Cliff isn't doing that. So, Kyle, it's, it's boiling over. It's coming to a head. Uh, we, heard, we, had, we heard talks about it last week about Cliff saying that he's, you know, thinking about, you know, letting that clipboard slide over to the next hand, right? <laughs> it would behoove you, brother, if you want to keep your job. We have a talented football team. We have a talented enough football team to beat anybody we play against on Sundays, Thursdays, Mondays. Anybody, right? So, that's right. He's been recruiting since junior high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Mitch with the facts is they popping in. It's crazy. Either way it goes, I love to see the passion. And at this point, he has the right to, right? He's a leader on our team. He's doing things the right way at this point. So right now, he can't. He has the right to. He has the right to get upset. He has the right. Now, again, he wasn't being disrespectful. He was just like, yo, chill. We cool, right? Just relax. You know, do your job. Do what you're supposed to do. We're going to take care of this shit. Cliff got to be better. I've said it a million times. I'm going to continue to say it. He has to be better, right? Again, I'm going to say Cliff, fast clipboard, be more of a head coach, delegate, be more of a quarterback coach, you know what I'm saying, because that's your expertise, right? Hey, we're not taking nothing away from you, you know what I'm saying? You play ball, you coach ball. Hey, it is what it is, right? You're, a head, you're our head coach. We got we to love you, right? you like that uncle, you know what I'm saying, that we kind of ashamed of, <laughs> but we love him anyway, right? We got to love you. We need you to be better, period. Drinks, he, he, he drinks a little bit too much, but damn it, you always, you always invite him home over, over for Thanksgiving. You gotta have so, him there, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you know he's gonna do a good dance for you. <laughs> damn it, <laughs> god damn it, Unc. I mean, and look, and JB, maybe this is maybe this is the, the slight kind of like blow up that they needed to just really clearly communicate with each other because we are right in the middle of the season, something's got to give. And like you said, whether it's, it's Cliff passing the sticks or them just communicating better and getting a better flow with play calling during the game. They need to figure something out because this this season is gonna is potentially gonna. This is the turning point. Double over. This is the turning point right now. All I know is three and four looks better than two and five, right? And we yep. can very easily beat Minnesota to get to five hundred, right? So yeah, Mitch Mitch wants me to tell a story. I don't have, I don't recall anything, Mitch, right now. You know, what I'm saying as far as like blow ups that have happened. I've been in a lot of locker rooms where there been some fights cracking and there been some things going on, and I've I've been on teams where coaches have gotten fired before we went to games, right? <laughs> I've seen it all. I don't see it all in ten years. My my ten year tenure in the NFL. I don't see it all, right? Uh, blow ups on the sideline. That's kind of common. That's nothing. That's not like that's not uncommon in football, right? It's not uncommon in sports. We see it happen all the time. These are grown men. They want to win. There's a passion there, right? The coaches are grown men. They want to win. There's a passion there. So, what's up, my man? So we got to make sure. What's up, boy? We got to make sure that that all these passions are going in the same goddamn direction. Right, that's all we got to make sure of. Right, so we the passions can't be big out little you. It's got to be we all going in the same direction. So this passion I have, Kyler Fuss and the Cliff. You know what I'm saying? That was passion saying, "Hey, I want to win. I want to be part of what we got going on. I want you to be part of what we got going on. Let's get this shit together." So, right, yeah, well, yeah. We're at, we're at the fork fork in the road. We'll see how it goes. Speaking of being at a fucking fork in the road, JB, good God Almighty, my kidneys <laughs> fall. The Cowboys, 24 to 6. That was Mitch's money making pick of the week. And boy, was it wrong for picking that spread. <laughs> he blew it. Um, you know, in, interestingly enough, they're coming off the bye week. And this was the best week that their defense played all season. And they, MCDC did a pretty good job as far as play calling and decision making and clock management. But old Goffy Goff going to Goffy Goff. And he, and he <sighs> gave it up. And, and that, that was the turn of the game in the third quarter when they let it go to the Cowboys. So. Dr. Bridges, there's plenty of blame to go around situations like this when you're one <laughs> one one win team. Plenty of blame. But, but ultimately, <laughs> what do you think? Um, what do you think that we're looking at as far as like when when is it when is the decision made that it's time to like move off a head coach? By the way, I don't even think this is the right time, but I'm wondering, it's very it's very much a split opinion on this guy. Um I honestly think it's good for you guys' culture. I think Gary, I think Jerry Goff just needs to go, right? You Agreed. guys need a better quarterback. Yeah. Point blank period, you need a better quarterback. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't know stats and miss. I'm pretty sure you're kicking here in a second about golf's reception to its pass and touchdown ratio and all that stuff. But I just think you guys need a better leader behind center, right? You got all the intangibles, right? You got a great running back, right? 
Uh, we got decent offensive line, going to be better, right? Um, receivers, you got playmakers. You know what I'm saying? You can use one more playmaker, right? Defensively, you guys are tough. Play hard nose. I just think that, yeah, he came in there with the whole toughness approach. Now it's let's game plan to win approach, right? You got to take your feelings out of coaching. You got to use your smarts, right? You got to use your football sense, right? These are things that you have to do. So I think he's learning. Campbell, what's his last name? Campbell, right? Yep. He's learning, right? I still think he's the guy for y'all. I just think you guys just don't frame well right now. And you got to, you know, golf ain't the guy. He's just not the guy, man. So. Right, what, right, 100%. And that's where it starts, and you definitely need playmakers there. Uh, 1,600 yards, 11 TDs, 6 interceptions. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, like Mitch, you're, like you're pulling up. I mean, the unfortunate reality is – is, is is he's he's so he's so in the middle his name might as well be Malcolm. You know what I mean? Right, like that's right. just where it is. You ain't you ain't gonna, I mean you could do worse, you're but talking you're about not just, you're talking about just blending in, but you call that boy camouflage, you know what I'm saying? Right, he just, right. He's just there. Exactly. Right? Not not the dynamic guy that you need, like you have to have in this league to do it. So yeah, you can't blame all the problems on head coach. Will he have to make maybe make some coordinator moves at the end of the year? Mm. Absolutely. Um but at the end of the day, you can't you can't go through the cycle like a lot of bad franchises do, where every two years is like new coach, every two years like because then the best candidates don't want to come there because they feel like I'm a dead man walking as soon as right, I walk in right. the door. Like, you're you're like, you're like, somewhere else. You're like man, I throw one pick. You want me looking for somebody to replace? Right. Me. God damn. Look at the old old, right. old lady, old lady in the in the right. suite with the binoculars. Like, <laughs> no, nah, she got she got a one. She got the one jaw. You know <laughs> she, 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 <laughs> she got the the pirate jaw. You uh, know what I'm saying? Arr, she said that's walk the plank. <laughs> oh my God! So, kitties. I mean, look. We'll see if they can they can get close to to getting their Vegas over under of six and a half. I seriously doubt it now. But listen, if they get more than three, that's technically process progress. So we'll see what happens. Keeping it moving, Doctor Bridges. Oh, the Packers fell to the Commanders, and the Bucks lose an inglorious fashion mm. to the Panthers. Jeremy, are the are Brady and Rogers slipping, or the rest of the team tripping? What are we looking at? Uh, Brady and Rogers both are slipping. Now they're both getting old. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, now, as far so, I'm gonna say Brady is slipping more. We understand why he's slipping. Again, that man's going through a lot right now. He's trying not to let it distract him. A- but, AB's, AB's tearing it down. Right, you know what I'm saying? AB in there, motherfucking busting nuts <laughs> and ripping gut. You know what I'm saying? And that's allegedly, folks. We're not saying that he's really doing that. So please don't quote us on that, right? But it's the pool boy. Now I'm just joking. So, but uh, with it being said, Tom Brady is not doing well at all, right? And Rodgers is having a lot of misfortune. <laughs> Right, a lot. Now he's still slipping because with you knowing that your receivers aren't the guys that you've had, right? And and and, Ky- and Randall Cobb can only do so much, right? He's on the IR, what? by the way. Oh my God! So see, now he's out there. What's he, what's the what's the his name? Turnick or something like that? Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, who is it? Tunyon. Right? Tunyon. Yeah. So yep. they can only do so much. But what I'm saying with Aaron Rodgers is that Aaron Rodgers like to throw the ball away from the defender. And with his old receivers like Devontae Adams and some of the other cats he's had to pass, they would make those catches, right, to protect themselves from that defender that he's throwing the ball right. away from. These young cats don't do that. So they got to take them hits, right? So Aaron Rodgers, you got to start not not airing them out to dry, but, like, put dot in them. Put the ball in their fucking chest. The defender right there, you got to start earning that big-ass paycheck, big fella. It's on you. It's on you to make your team better. Period, right? It's on you. You can't make those, like I said, those dark, those dark laser dart perfection throws to certain spots because you know the defender's there. He's the best at it, right? He's the best in the league at it, right? So I say more so it's a kind of a 50 50 with Rodgers, right? But it's more so slipping with Brady. Yeah, and, and Mitch brings up a good point in the chat where Brady was is typically used to, and Rodgers to a certain degree, but not nearly as much as Brady, where he's kind of used to having the security blanket of Gronk or just a right. good tight end that can really, you know, mm-hmm. he can go through his progression, he can check down to them. They're gonna get open in the zone, find a right. soft spot. Right. Doesn't really have that. So I do think it's I do think it's a combination of them slipping and not being entirely focused, but also they're they're not getting a lot of help from with the talent that they have plus injuries. Now right. how that will carry over. I think the Packers are in worse shape because their defense is not really showing up for them either. Yeah, and yeah. I think they're in, in grave danger of missing the playoffs. Like right. I think it's entirely plausible that you know that they will because they're they're playing they're playing Sunday night against the Mafia. Oh. I think they're, they're going to get ran off the block. Oh. If you're being Mafia. honest. Rodgers didn't practice today. I mean, he's probably going to play, but oh man. JB, speaking of so much bad, it can't be no good. Goddamn. Right. Hey, speaking of so much bad, it can't be no good. 
The Bears beat the Pats on Monday Night Football in a game with a lot of field goals. But JB, they're pulling Mac Jones after he pulls a pick. They pull in Zappy. He throws two picks. Justin Fields, I'm not going to blame it entirely on him because I know they got offensive line problems. But we've had this discussion. The OG reviewers know we've had the discussion on this fine program. Is the world ready to admit that Alabama and Ohio State do not produce good quarterbacks? Mitch, uh, I would love stats on this. I don't, I don't know if they're ready to admit it or not, but I can't recall a Who great. Are they? Who I can't are recall. These people? I can't recall besides what Kenny Stabler, good right? Did, didn't he go to Alabama? No, Namath. Right, Namath. You, you know what I'm saying? You need more people. Right? Come on, man. Like I, they just don't produce good quarterbacks because they have everything under the sun available to them to throw the ball to, right? They got every great receiver. Right. All their receivers run four fours, right? Like the, they, got, they got the best, basically. They got the best offenses, right? They're playing against teams and, and then defensive backs. They just, they just have the best of everything in front of them. So, hell, you can put most people in there and, and most quarterbacks in that situation, they're going to fare very well, right? Bryce Young is probably, honestly, honestly, the most together polished quarterback that Alabama has had in a long time right. that's going to transition to the next level, right? Tua, not bad, right? Ain't right time to read all that shit up, Mitch. Damn. Uh, <laughs> God damn. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't break that shit down, paraphrase. Yeah, look I'm at these joking. names. I'm just joking, Mitch. Joe, Joe Germain. Fuck. Uh, right. all the, oh, Joe by Germain. the way, all, all, the, yeah. all these all quarterbacks bust. Michigan Yeah, we beat. get it. Yeah. yeah so, and then, of course, Ohio State, man. Come on, bro. Do I really like start naming these cats off, right? That we don't forgot about, that we don't even know exists no more, right? Cardell and, and, Jones, and this Nerd. kid, and this kid, they got in there now. Same skill set as everything else we've seen, right? Same skill set. He ain't nothing special, nothing spectacular, right? He can just throw the ball to open receivers. Shit, I mean, and he got a, a smidgen of athletic ability. Yeah. Typical like, Ohio State like quarterback. Hooker, I like Bryce Young and, and Hooker out of Tennessee more than yeah. uh, I think talking, Hooker's going to be a great. You're talking, pro. you're talking about some man. The, the kid of Tennessee is probably the best quarterback in college football right now. I agree. Right? I agree. I think all the way around the board. All the way around the board. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, like you said, this may be the may, the to to pun intended the tie might be toining for a Bryce Young. So we will see about that. And finally, Jay, before we get into our next part of this recap segment. Of course, some big trades. Trade deadline is coming up. CMC goes from your former employer, the Panthers, to the Niners for you know fourth round pick, whatever the compensation was. And then as of today, Robert Quinn from the Bears went to the E A G L E S Eagles, who are trying to stack on that already stacked defense. What did you make of these I'm gonna, couple trades? I'm, I'm going to say that the Bears fared better. I mean, um, the Eagles fell better, fared better than the 49ers. CMC is a great. Yes, sir ball player but at the same time you want to be real you're right that's one but you want to be real the cat that they got rid of um what's his name mount Mo- more sorry and more sorry to some shit most uh, yeah who's with Mostert. miami now yeah, yeah. same skill set right same skill set i'm sorry I, you know you can say what you want to say same skill set right uh so he was just as valuable to that offense as cmc is gonna be right but as we saw the other night when they lost right to the chiefs whose defense ain't the greatest, just be honest, right? They got, you know, they got big boy in the middle. You know, they got some solid defensive backs. They got a decent linebacker core, right? Uh, Mans came up big for him in the end. Um, what's Ford? His last name Ford, the defensive end? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he came up big for him late in the game, right? So, CMC is going to be okay for them. Yeah, he's a great weapon. Don't get me wrong. But he's just going to do the exact same thing that any other back in that system would do, right? This Quinn cat. Hey, he, he going to pay big dividends for the Eagles, right? So, you know, and like you said, now they can get into a Ferrari package where they can put Quinn in there, Graham, oh, and, and, and uh, Hassan Reddick, and then the other cat, Sweat. Is Sweat still there, right? Uh, like, so, they, can yeah. get a, they can get a Ferrari package and have four outside linebackers slash defensive end types who have size and speed. They can do all kind of shit, right? They can do all kind of shit. Shit. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, Mitch. I mean, that's the thing. It's in almost in in a weird way. It almost kind of because here's the thing. We all know that we all know that Debo was like, "Get me the fuck up out of here," because you keep treating me like a running back. And then and then Kyle Shanahan was like, "Sure thing, whatever you say." Wink, wink. And then they gave right. him the new deal. And what do you know? They're still running packages with him out of the backfield. <laughs> with him in so, the backfield. 
So now all you're doing is putting CMC in that position, but then it's like, how are they going to modify that for Debo if he's going to be like in the slot, for example? Because you know Shanahan loves having him in the backfield. He's like, again, that shit. again, bro, that offense is a machine, right? And I've said it a million times. He is in McBay's. They're both machines. There's no variation in what they do. You put cogs in there and you call the plays. Now, it just so happens that he has the cogs that he needs with use check, you know what I'm saying, Kittle. Uh, again, CMC is there now. He has Debo Samuels, you know what I'm saying? Now, Yuki, you know what I'm saying, is playing decent ball. And then, of course, Jimmy G is the ultimate game manager, right? So he's got the cogs that he needs, but they still going to do what they do. Jimmy G going to Jimmy G, right? At some point in the game, he going to miss some throws, right? That's going to cost some drives, right? He's going to throw a pick that's going to cost him a drive or cost him a game. We just saw it against Kansas City. Like, Kansas City should not have won that game. I'm just being honest. They should not have won that game the way San Francisco came out was playing at home, right? But they, you know, they did what they do. So, yeah, CMC, congratulations. You got out of Carolina, which is a dumpster fire right now. Ooh. Right? Even though, look what they did. You know what I'm saying? When they had their pieces, like, right to this kid, uh, wasn't that he probably should have been starting quarterback the whole year. <laughs> PJ know? Walker, yeah. Yes, right. So he probably should have yeah. been starting quarterback the whole year. They brought Baker Mayfield weak ass in there. <laughs> and then they had Sam Arnold and Yarnold. Like Arnold, so. Harness. Oh, man. Yeah. Ooh-wee. Well, we'll see what plays out. Uh, but before we get to some more trade potentials, let's pay some bills real quick. Again, tapping with our young boys over there. Valley Boy the Association. sweet life of Zach and Cody. Zach and Cody. Valleyboyassociation.com. Use code PODCAST22 for 20% off your order at checkout. Get the strap right now. I'm talking that championship belt. It's timtobuy.com. Get your new pre-owned vehicle. Text review to 515-444-7003 or DM him at it's Tim to buy on Instagram and he'll get you into the car of your dreams. And make sure to tap in with our merch. Head over to JB and Bending Blue Review.com slash store and get that Burr Gang all day made to order shirt. Use the code BG for 10% off of your order. A pow, 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 pow. All right. So that's the deal. Now the trade deadline is coming up here on the foist. All right. So we're going to bring in Mitch to the chat. Money making Mitch has entered the chat. Money the making Mitch. Unmute night. your mic, Mitch. All right. Get on mute. And now. Hey, I learned how to. Hey, there, there it is. There it is. So now we're going to do a little reviews patented. 2022 trade deadline predictor. And these are Mitch's top five that he's predicting. Starting with Mitch, the Commanders, Darren Payne. The Commanders having a topsy-turvy, wishy-washy-ass season, and they might be moving some assets to get some better plays for the future. Mitch, you picked uh, Mr. Payne at number five. Where do you think he goes, and why do you think he's the best fit there? I think this is the least likely of my top five to get traded. I will start off Mm. there. I he probably will end up staying compared to maybe some of the others, but I think his best placement would be the Seattle Seahawks. Ooh, if they Seattle want to well. keep this Geno Smith train it going, they need that defense to be bulked up a little bit more. And I think, you know, they're a big defensive team. That's how they won the Super Bowl. That's how they want to keep winning. I think this would be a perfect fit for him. Nice. Okay. JB thoughts? I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, he was a first round draft pick. He's eventually going to cost him a shitload more money than they want to pay him. Um, it's perfect. It, it makes sense. At that point, you know what I'm You start to become a cap casualty, right? And that's what we're looking at with him. You don't think that BG makes a play? Look at my face. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking to, but I'm definitely shaking my head Look at, look at my He's face. He's like talking that. to me, but look at my face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I mean, no. how about how about how about a play? How about a play for this, Doctor Bridges? Coming in number four, Mitch's list. It's Bradley Chubb. Ooh wee! Now, now, now we talking your language? For me, yes. Right now, you're talking my language like Drake said. Right, this one makes a little more sense for us. Right, uh, and again, I'm cool. With, we need interior D lineman too. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Again, you get another guy like this who can still play that three technique, right? In a hybrid 3-4 defense, right? Wreak havoc on the inside. He can play the run inside. Like he, he's a he's a really good fit for our defense. I wouldn't mind seeing this at all. All right. Well, Mitch, you picked this one. Where where do you think he should go if he does, if he is on the block? 
I think this is a, you know, this team wants to win right now. They have a quarterback that needs to win now. They're struggling. Go all in. Why not the Bucks? Really? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Add it to uh, what's the kid's name? Uh, what's the, what's the kid's name? The Shaquille, uh, the defensive end, outside guy. Who just got Shaquille injured? Griffin. Oh damn it! Well, yeah. So now it makes now so now it makes even more sense, right? Yeah, yeah, he just got put on the IR. I don't remember. Ooh. I think he had a pectoral tear, if I remember, Ooh. but that's not official. I'll look it up during our uh, injury report later. And, and if the, <laughs> the soft tissue, and and <laughs> if he's always like the fucking soft tissue. <laughs> and listen, the Bucks and Mitch, to your point, the Bucks might be desperate enough with whatever they're going to have left with Brady. And if if the Broncos are really going to admit, yo, this season ain't going anywhere, they might try to move the asset to try to rebuild the team. Uh, the Bucks might be willing to overpay. So there you go with uh, with Bradley Chubb. All right, coming in number three, Mitch, stick sticking with the Broncos. You said Jerry Judy. This is a fucking spicy mm. one. And he, he's still on the rookie deal, you think? Uh, he has only a couple years left. I think they're having a fire sale at this point. I don't think they have. It's, it's Walmart. Walmart owns them. Whenever something yeah, goes every, wrong, everything Everything must go. Roll back prices. <laughs> um, I don't so where know would he where go? He, I think every team could use him, so I don't know where he should go because every team is the correct answer, including the Broncos. My hope would be the Titans, just because I'm a Titans fan. So there's my That'd be a great place for him. Yeah. Use him, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, them, um, to be honest, um, the Cowboys could probably use him. That you put him in their offense, you know, what I'm saying that's just another weapon that that could really push them over the edge. Um, not us for sure. We got enough receivers. We cool. Yeah. Um, not the 49ers. They, you know, they don't need no more cogs. You know what I'm saying? That's good. Yeah. You know, they got plenty, right? Packers uh, out of desperation. The Packers. The, in conference. the Packers, without a doubt, you know what I'm saying? It's probably the team that needs them the most, to be honest, right? We want to talk they about get, teams that need them the most. I think the Packers need them the most. They need them the most, but they love people like A.J. Green, where they can pick them up for a six-round pick and just oh, not use God. them. Mm-hmm. Jesus, hey. that's true. That is their M.O. Can't, can't argue with you there. <laughs> they, they could they could really use them. All right, coming in number two, back to the commanders. It is DB William Jackson the Thuid Mitchell. That's again, this is one of those that pretty much every team can use a better DB than like at least one better DB. Hmm. Um any team can use it. It I think the most interesting team, and I think they wouldn't do it, would be the Bills, because I don't know how long Tradavius White is out. If not, mm. the Eagles would also be a good one. Um, right. But depending how long Davies White is out, I think going all in with the Bills. I think the Bills would benefit probably the best because of the fact that they have hired out and then uh, the other safety, was he's injured, but he kind of, I think he came back for this game, but he's still kind of gimp, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so at this point, you know, they can move a nickel uh, to a safety, you know what I'm saying? Somebody, somebody could probably play both. Uh, and that way they can give an island to, to William Jackson the third and – you know, let them hold it down. That would just really strengthen their defensive backfield, and that would enable them to, you know, run that good lazy Leslie Frazier uh, <laughs> hybrid, hybrid two deep uh, defenses like they he likes to run. Yeah, definitely. I mean, assuming that they wouldn't want to trade him in conference, I could see him going to the Bills. I think if they did trade him in conference, maybe the Vikings make a play at him. Mm, yeah, that, I, I mean, that. they they have the season where they potentially could make a run, and they they might be willing to part with a couple picks and overpay a little bit to uh to get them. I mean, Rice and the Green Bay could use them too. Let's be honest, let's be real. You know, they could use. But them would too. they make the move with the way their season? No, going, of course though. not. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't think they would do it. If they if they if they if it was an injury and they were doing Packer things like they normally do, hell yeah, I think they would do that. But I think they know Rogers about to be you know taking ayahuasca and fucking Bombay in, in about three months so they know eh we ain't gonna do it this time it's but <laughs> but a guy who's been the rumors for for a minute and he's asked for a trade coming in for Mitch's number one is Kareem Hunt Mitch where do, I mean he's been asking for the trade he they're flirting with it but where where do you think is actually his best fit if they do move him I'm actually interested to hear where you might be on this one because I think most teams that are completely run dependent with one runner which is what Kareem Hunt is going to want to be I think most of them have their one runner. Like I was looking at the Colts. They have their guy. The Giants have their guy. The Ooh. Titans have their guy. The Jets. Because the you know, Jets that, just, Well, they, they signed traded. Robinson. They That's cool. For, yeah. They just yeah. traded for Robinson, but who's the dominant runner in this situation? Right? Who's the most dominant runner in this situation? You're gonna take Kareem Hunt for more carries, you're gonna take Robinson. I'm gonna well, take Kareem Hunt because he can you do know both. Who I think it's gonna be, honestly, I think it's gonna be the Rams. 
Mm, I think the Rams I could, could use him the most. I could see they're that. Not, they're not getting out of Anderson. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. But I, but I, but I can see it. Right? They're not so getting. Cam they're Akers not getting the most out of Henderson. Hurt. Cam Akers is hurt, so I was thinking the Rams myself. I didn't want to put it there. My yeah, other thought that. was, and it's a really, <laughs> it's such a boring team. But my other thought was possibly the Bears, and just because it's the Bears. What about Jacksonville, though? Right, like you know, you go to Jacksonville. They got you know, Etn. Etn's a great runner. That's fine, but he he is a great runner. But Etn is more of a threat. Out of the backfield, you know what I'm saying, as far as in the passing game because of his screen ability, you know what I'm saying, he can run between the tackles, but you're talking about a bruiser versus a not so much of a bruiser, right? And then plus we know ATN, he's 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 injury prone, right? But, From his physical clinic. But will ETN then freak out and then you'll have the Travis ETN conversation not. where not he's like, I'm on the screen now. Not at all, he wouldn't freak out. He'll be like, Shit, this get this motherfucker some carries too, shit. Right. <laughs> like, all right. But I think I think the thing to consider with all the with all these names that with that uh, Mitch picked is that, and you see this really every year, you have to key in on the teams who know that either like like JB kind of was saying with the Jets or what you've all kind of talked about in reference, like uh, Mitch you said with the Bills, you have to look at the teams that know they still have a shot to make a run, and either because of injury or just a missing piece talent wise, they got to make a move to like shore up the team. So you got to figure with the Rams, it's like okay. We're three and three. We're the defending champs. We're in the middle of the season. We got to do something to add another piece because they don't know if they're actually going to come back and get Odell, you know, or later in the season. He, if he's he not, he's not going all. back to the rounds, bro. I'm telling you, he's not going back. Right, right. So they got to figure something out. You look at a lot of these teams who feel like they're a piece away, like with the Bucks, JB, like you were saying, like, will they make a play to try to like sure up some of the shit that's just crushing them, like on defense, for example? So. Hey, I think I think that's how these teams are going to look at it, and you might get some overpays for some of these guys if they feel like they really still have a shot. I can so, see it. We'll see what's happening. All right, ain't nothing to it but to do it. That's been some week seven recap, and we are going to get into the shit right now. Let's get it uh, with some savage picks. But before we do that, we got to see how we've been doing after seven weeks, and with a drum roll, please, baby. That's right. JB is at 54, 52, and 1, but yours truly is at 61, 45, and 1. Oh, good God almighty. Let's run through them real quick. We both picked the BG to get the job done. We both picked the Bucks. Eh, they lost to the Panthers. The Commanders beat the, beat the Packers. Mitch's Titans got the dub. We both picked that correctly, as did the Bungles. The Ravens, I correctly picked the Giants. JB picked the Jags. JB picked the Cowboys over my kitties. Raiders got it done. I picked the Jets again. They've been hot for me. <laughs> the Seahawks beat beat the Chargers. Chiefs beat the Niners. Dolphins beat the Steelers. Both got that wrong. And we got the uh, Bears beating the Patriots uh, on Monday night. So that's what it is, people. But let's get to it right now with some motherfucking Week 8 Savage picks. Woo-wee! Starting with some Thursday night football. It's, quote, the Raven nevermore. Going down, flying down to Tampa Bay's Buccaneers, and the line is one and a half for the Ravens on the road, Dr. Bridges. Yep. Uh, let's see here. No count. Now, I'm taking Baltimore. All right. I'm taking Baltimore. I'm taking Baltimore. I'm taking Baltimore. All right. This is what it is. No Campbell, no Bateman, then no Julio for the Bucks. I don't know. I don't I don't see I don't see the Bucks with their problems bouncing back. Uh, I'm taking the Ravens as well. Mitch, who do you like in this one? Up? Oh, are you muted? Turn your, mic, turn your mic on. Nope. He's still muted. I'm taking the Ravens on this he one. He's got the Ravens as well. All right. Very good. All right. We're taking it to Foggy London Town. JB, Russell Wilson's over there doing high knees on the plane. All types of shit against Duval in London. And the line is three and a half for the Jaguars in London. Duval. Yep. I like it. I'm taking the Jags as well. Uh, injury wise, we have anything? Yeah, but uh, Mitch, who do you got in this one? Um, I'm interested. I should have looked at the stats on how often Jacksonville wins because I feel like that's an actual stat at this point in London. Um, since Jacksonville is the home team, they get land there a little bit earlier. I think they're a better team, also. I got the Jags. Yep, we all agree on that. All right, the Dolphins. Coming in off the dub, going against my kitties, and the line is three for the Dolphins on the road, JB. Uh, I got to pick the fans on this one, man. Uh, just on the strength of more offensive talent 
And, you know, you guys' defense is too hit or miss, right? They'll be up on you guys by fucking 14 points before you know it. Yeah, this one this one is a potential to be an ugly, janky game. Listen, if the kitties can play complete ball where not one side's playing well, but the other side's fucking up and they just keep flipping and reversing it each week, golf cannot make mistakes. Brother, you cannot throw two or three picks in this one and expect to win. They got way too much firepower. So it's possible if they make it an ugly, jank, as, as JB likes to say, that weird slot when you go play in Detroit, hey, the jank that's game. One, one thing about it is playing Detroit is not the business. Right, so that's the possibility that, that they have to win it, so we'll see. And this is, in fact, Mitch's money-making pick of the week. Mitch, you were, you were picking the spread, the Dolphins, to clear the spread against the Kitties, but who do, who do you like in the, in the actual uh, money line, sir? Oh, I still got Miami on this one. I don't know if TJ Hawkinson's playing, which will make a huge thing. Uh, I we'll see if Swift is back. Uh, Swift is back, who's great, and Jamison Williams is out. I still got Miami. Yep. There you go. If you're if you're a betting man, I, w- I would like that. And you are, I think you were what one and two on the year so far with a money making pick of the week, correct? Yep. And last time I did gambling, I went one and two, and then went fourteen and two by the end. So. Ooh, wee. if you see your reviews, if you see he, he, t- he took the kitties plus Uh-oh. seven last week, and ooh, wee, that was flex. an ugly spread. No there flex. That, that was a slight flex right there, man. <laughs> I'm gonna make a run here. I'll, there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll be good. Love it. Love it. All right. Keeping it moving here. It's the Steelers going to JB's drafting team, the E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles. JB, the line is 11. Cheeky line for the Eagles at home. Not going to take the line. Going to take the Eagles. Uh, Pittsburgh got some soul searching to do. And with that damn defensive line of Philadelphia and that whack-ass offensive line of Pittsburgh, ain't no way in hell they're going to beat them at home for sure. Ain't no way in hell. Yeah, the link's going to be rocking. I'm definitely curious to see if they if, if Robert – I wonder if Robert Quinn's actually going to play this week. If not, I wouldn't be surprised. He'll, he'll, he'll probably. I, I, I'll give him. He won't start. No, he won't start. But I'll give him. I, I'll give him twelve snaps. No Lane Johnson. No TJ Watt. Eh, I don't. I don't think that's consequential for that for this game. I'm taking. I'm taking the Eagles to stay undefeated. Uh, Mitch, who you got? I got the Eagles. Also, I do think TJ Watt would move the line quite a bit, but I would still have the Eagles. All right there, you go. All right. Let's see here. It's the Jets, dude. At the Pass the Duncan. Pass the Duncan. Jets, Jets, Jets. Pass the Duncan. <laughs> uh, and the line is two and a half for the – wait a minute. It's two and a half for the the the, the Pats? What the hell is going on here? Is it because of the injury to Brees Hall? What in the, well, what in the they, Sam they, Hill they, is going they, on they, here? They, it is. It's, just, two, it's two and a half for the Pats. The they road. just traded, though. They just traded for a running back. Well, I mean, he's not going to play much, but right. still, like – Right. You know That's what? The current line. You know what? And I'm going to England, right? Really? I'm going to England. I'm going to England, all right? You know, it's a Belichick team. They're going to bounce back, especially against these cats, right? I'm going to England. I don't know what I don't know what I'm getting out of quarterback. So I'm. T- I mean, I know what they can do on defense, but damn it, I, I can't trust the damn thing they do on offense. So I think I'm going to take the Jets at home to get a much needed oh, yeah. win against the Pats. Uh, Mitch, what do you yeah, got? Yeah. I was going to go the Jets until I saw the line, and I think Vegas is always smarter than me. Um, I'm going New England because I trust Vegas more than I trust my gut. That's true. I'm, I'm betting this one, though. I'm not going to lie. They got Sam Rothstein. You know they got Rothstein in there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, they, got, they got our guy Rothstein over there, you know what I'm saying? Fuck legs shit. broke. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. All right, NFC South matchup is JB's former employer, the Keep Pounding Panthers, Going down to the Dirty Birds, and the line is six for the Falcons at home. I don't do this much, but I'm picking the Falcons. <laughs> I don't do this much, but I'm picking the Falcons. I ain't going to pick them by six. I think they're going to win the game by three or four points, but yeah, I'm picking the Falcons, man. Yeah, I'm taking the Falcons as well. Panthers at this point are, are, are literally vying for that number one spot, and that's where the ludicrous out of the ATL. They want it. They want to have a everything must go sale <laughs> and, lose, <laughs> and, lose, <laughs> and lose as much as possible. So I'm taking the Falcons as well. Mitchell, who you got? This should have been my money-making pick right here. Right. I would definitely take Atlanta. They have covered um, every game except for last game. Um, when it comes to the spread, um, I think they win this game. All right. We're all in agreement there. All right. Keep it moving. It's a... Raiders going down to the yeah, big buddy. Bowl, bowl, baby. They're zero and three on the road. Raiders taking on the Saints are one and three at home, and the line is two for the Raiders on the road. Well, Benny, you know how I do when I play this horn. Eh? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Dalton to start, by the way. The Saints, they're going to march in, right? Because I don't trust Vegas to save my motherfucking life. All right, here we go. I got to say it. Well, I do trust Vegas. I don't say, trust Andy Dalton to save save my goddamn life. So I'm taking the Raiders on the road to get it done. Mitch, what what do you got? You, you, how are you going to split the tie? I trust the sports book, and even though I don't trust Vegas Raiders, I think Vegas Raiders get their first away win of the year. Wow, Ooh, in New Orleans, buddy, shit! You know all, right. all the voodoo that goes on down there. I don't know. Uh, you can do that, yeah. but we also got the redhead rifle over there. So that oh kind my of god, the red me. rocket. The red BB gun. Okay, so the thing about it is that he threw, what, three picks last week? Yes? Right? Well, he won't do it twice, right? So you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see. All right, it's the Bears. Is the... What's up, Bears? Uh, about, the, about them cowgirls, I mean, them cowboys who are hosting the Bears, and the line is 10 and a half for the cowboys at home, JB. Mm, 10 and a half? I don't know about all that. Uh, Chicago gonna make it make it weird, you know what I'm saying? I think Dak gonna throw a couple interceptions. To be honest, just to be honest, uh, the Cowboys gonna win. I wouldn't take that line though. Yeah, same. Don't like don't like the line, but uh, I'm definitely taking the Cowboys in this one. Mitch, what you got? I never like a double digit line. Still taking the Cowboys. There you go. All right, Mitch, here it comes. It's the Boyd Gang heading to the the Skull Vikings, baby. This is this this is a. This is going to be a, a hot one. Uh, the Vikings are three and zero at home, and the line is three and a half for the Vikings. Mitch, I'm definitely curious on, on injuries on this, but JB, break it down for your BG. Well, I mean, three phases, three phases of football. That's all we need, right? Uh, we're a more talented football team than them, right? It comes down to coaching. Hopefully, Cliff doesn't fucking bitch up and he calls a decent game if he still got the clipboard in hand. Uh, but if he doesn't have a clipboard in hand, we're probably fair better. But either way it goes, all right. Uh, defense don't give up the holes. Uh, don't let Thielen have a big game, and we'll be just fine, right? Well, Mitch, if you're if you're if you're looking and you're about to tell me that the BG have some real serious injuries, which I don't think they do of anything of consequence this uh, week. Richard Lawrence is the only one. Okay, uh-huh. I'm taking I'm taking the BG JB, but God damn it, this is completely dependent on if Cliff and Kyler are going to be in fucking in sync. Because they can't go out there and play a bad game, right? Now, we you know mean, they mean, play on the you road. Mean, you mean the music group in sync? Or? Right, <laughs> right. basically. <laughs> they're basically like a boy band with all the fucking drama. Yeah, right. Fucking punks. Right. Jesus fucking Christ. Punks, so right. I'm going to take the Cardinals, but it's completely dependent on Cliff. Ugh, Cliff, don't fuck it up. Please don't fuck it up. M- Mitch, what you got? God, the Cardinals got 10 days off. That's amazing. My biggest worry is they're on the East Coast. It's a 10 a.m. game, which means it's a 7 a.m. game, which means they probably won't wake up to the second half. I got the Vikings. I'm changing my mind. Oh, no. Oh, man. This was a hard one to pick. I'm not going to lie. Good logic. Man. Good logic. Good logic. Good logic. Yep. All right. Well, we're going to pull at your heartstrings there, Dr. Hughes. It's your Titan up Titans against the H tag coming down. Texans, and the line is two for Tennessee on the road. Mitch, uh, why 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 are you why will your Titans win? Break it down for your Titans. Um here's actually one of the stats I was working on. Super excited for this one. <laughs> Eric Henry has six hundred and seventy three yards and seven touchdowns in his last three games against the Texans. Huh? Do I need to speak more? No, nah, not really. I got <laughs> I got the Titans anyway, so it don't, it don't yeah. matter to me. You ain't gotta convince me, Mitch. <laughs> okay. Texans are gonna have to, have to really tighten up to try to spoil it. I mean I guess it's possible. No pun I mean, intended. It's possible. But I'm yeah I'm, I'm I'm definitely playing safe taking the Titans. All right, it's the Commanders going against the recently benched Matt Ryan list. Matty Ice Cole. got put on ice. Matty Slush in favor of Sam Ellinger, and the line is three still for the Colts at home. Ellinger is a kid from Texas, right? Correct. Yeah, he wasn't very good at Texas, so uh, I'm going with the Commanders. Yeah, I'm taking the Commanders as well. I'm actually kind of surprised that given that news that Vegas still has this line as minus three. Yeah, this uh, this one I actually might bet as well. No injuries looking like. Uh, Mitch, who you got in this one? In this one, I got the Colts. I don't think they'll know oh. how to defend Ellinger just because there's no video of any right, sort. Right. Yeah, He's going to make, he's he's gonna make just, some of those wild plays because he can run a little bit. Yeah, I think he gets a surprise win out of it. And then we talk about Ellinger as we talked about um, Cooper Rush for like three weeks. And then I hate oh my, my life sake. because I hate Cooper that guy. Rush. And then um, next thing you know, he throws four picks in a game and then we can go back to normal. Reality <laughs> strikes, Mitch. That's what happened. Next thing you know, reality uh, strikes. 
But game Love one, it. game one, he's got this. Yeah, no day, no day. There you go. All right, this, this is a, this is an intriguing matchup. I'm looking for this. It's the G man against the the who? <laughs> Wake the neighbors. It's Seattle the hosting them in the big the coffee Gino cup. The Gino Lance Squawks. Yep. <laughs> and the line's three for the Squawks at home, JB. Yeah, fuck the Squawks. All right. Go to, well, you know what? Man. I don't know, man. Gino been playing well. But New York Giants is a janky-ass football team. All right? Give me the fucking G, man. Let's go. The G, man. Oh, my God. All right. I'm taking the Squawks. I'm taking the Squawks to finally put an end to this. He's this drinking the Kool-Aid, right? Mitch. Temporarily. He is sipping on the Kool-Aid, buddy. Yep. My question is, who's the G-Men? Because we got Gino on one side, and we got the Giants on the other. So we got a couple G-Men going no, on. No, right we're now. talking about the G-Men, not the G-Man. Right? <laughs> Gino, Gino would be the G-Man. The G-Men is plural, Mitch. Come on. I know you, you grew up in a mountainous town, but you know what I'm saying? Like you... I grew up in a farm town, which might be worse. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it's a mountainous atmosphere, right? <laughs> well, Mitch, Mitch, who who do you got in this one? What do you like? I'm glad you took the Seahawks because if you took the Giants, I was going to purposely just irritate JB a little bit and go the other way. But now <laughs> I'm going to choose who I want to win, and I'm going to go with the Giants. Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, that's tight. All right. We'll see. I'm definitely watching that one. All right, yeah, Niners at Rams, NFC West matchup, and the line is one and a half for SF in SoFi, JB. The Spider-Man meme, All right? Offensively, you know what I'm saying? So uh, in SoFi, I'm going to pick the Niners. The Rams just ain't got it, right? The Rams just ain't got it. CMC is going to have a hell of a game this game, right? And they're going to start blowing them heavy, right? Heavier, rather, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, he's going to be busting nuts all over the place, you know what I'm saying? Because the commentary is going to be – Sucking them off, um, yeah. I think the I think the Niners are gonna whoop their ass. All right, I'm, ta- I'm taking the uh, I'm taking the Niners as well. That, that was like a, that was like a Pornhub description for like the last like thirty seconds of the of the pick, like blowing them and smashing it. Good God Almighty! I'm, ta- I'm <laughs> nuts, nuts and busting, <laughs> nuts and busting. You know what I'm saying? Mitch, what do you got? Um, I also got the 49ers. All right, there you go. All, all in agreement there. All right, it's the boom, 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 boom. Go, Pat, go. It's a boom, 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 this is the first time Aaron Rodgers has ever been a double-digit underdog. I wow. don't know if I like that line Ooh. because I feel like Rodgers might be a little mad that this is the first time because we all know Rodgers really does care about everything that's said about him. I still think Buffalo wins. I just want to take that line in Vegas. So are you, say, are you saying that the belt comes out this game? I think this is... You know, you know what? You're right. I do think the belt comes out. I think. Are somehow, you saying that the belt comes out this game? I think the belt is he going to run for a first down in a crucial pivotal play, and he's going to get a bow, slam it on that, him. Thank you, JB. I changed my mind. Packers win because the belt comes out, and Aaron Rodgers pulls out the belt. Wait, so you, so you think so you think the Packers are actually going to win? I don't. I don't think the, the spread's going to get covered. We think they're going to win. Yep. Here comes the belt. This is a this is not only a belt game, this is now a pelt game. He is going to go and take the pelt from the Bills. Mm. Pure bold, insanity, Mitch. Bold Pure prediction. insanity. <laughs> All right. And boom, 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 boom. It's Monday Night Football. It's the Bungles going against the dog. I just power. told the dog to sit the fuck down. That's why I did this. You know, so I just told the dog to go sit down. And right. the line is three for the Bungles on the road, JB. The Battle of Ohio. Oh, hi ho. All right. So, with that being said, I got Cincy, man. You know what I'm saying? I got Cincy at Cleveland. It's not really a home game for either one of them when they play. So, it's going to be what for what. You know what I'm saying? It's really about who's winning, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Because I know Cleveland fans that got Cincinnati jerseys on the slick and right first. So, yeah, yeah I'm going. Yeah, I don't. I don't trust the line, and I think the Browns are gonna are gonna are gonna show up for a prime time game to make it interesting. But I definitely think the the Bengals are gonna are gonna get one get one done. It could be on the leg of one young Evan McPherson, JB, who ah. by the way is on our fantasy team. Ah. Uh, so we're taking the Bengals. Uh, Mitch, who you got, sir? I am also taking the Bengals, and this is 
this is the most Ohio thing ever where I don't give a crap about this game at all. So, way to go, Ohio. Ah, way, to go. way to go, Ohio. There a lot of horns. A lot of horns about to go on. A lot of horns. Right. <laughs> a lot right. of horns. Right. Chiefs and Chargers got the bye week, and we will see who's right, who's wrong, who's both right, who is both wrong. Quick the Chargers need football. a bye week after last week. Yeah, they need they need to use this after last week. Uh, quick fantasy football check in. We are sitting at five and two, uh, two game win streak. Team Nando is sitting in first place in the Bridges Division at six and one, and Limitless KB is also at six and one in the Blue Division on fantasy football. And that's it, Doctor Bridges. Take us home with a little bit of we need us, good sir. Go vote. That's just that. Go vote. Wherever you at, go vote. Second of all, fuck Clay Thomas, right? You know, we need us right here. This is JB talking. Thompson, yeah. This is JB talking shit, right? You don't bring your ass to the desert with all that weak ass shit. And and sons, great job of busting their head. Warriors, y'all some hoes for it. Oh, we got four championships. Nobody give a fuck about that shit, right? Nobody cares what you did yesterday, right? We live in the present. If I was booked, I'd be like, yeah, y'all got four championships, but in present time, I'm whooping your ass. Wop, 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 whooping your ass. You know what I'm saying? And Clay Thompson, you pussy ass. You ain't boy, you ain't boy. You ain't been hard since the last time you had sex. You know what I'm saying? Never. You ain't never been motherfucking tough, boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your bitch ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> pussy. Uh, he love was it. kicked out of a game because he, he threatened to fight somebody. Boy, you ain't going to fight no goddamn boy. Boy, sit your bitch ass down somewhere. We'll be lucky I would at the game. I'd have been Nipsey in this motherfucker. Rest in peace, Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? I'd have, have got him pull my pants up. You know what I'm saying? Let me get this. Let me get this. And the one right there with the hair of light skin. Well, let me get him. You know what I'm saying? Let me put these, these thunder cookies on his bitch ass. With all that being said, all right, this is episode 235. God damn it. Follow us on social media at JB and Benny Blue. All social media platforms and on YouTube. Five star, subscribe, like, tell your friends about us. All right. We live stream Wednesday, 745 Pacific Standard Time, 1045. Uh, Eastern Standard Now it's really 7.30 and 10.30 right. Somewhere there about, You'll see it You'll see time, it Time's about to change So you know what I'm saying East Coast You know what I'm saying We'll be getting y'all A little earlier Right And we appreciate y'all You know what I'm saying The people that are sticking with us Catch us on our Individual Instagrams At 73KingJB73 And of course At Benny Blue Eyes Which always was And always will be Alright Check us out In the Valley Listen live All right, Live streaming radio In Phoenix here Casualsports.com Shout out to Earl Ed Javon Sean and of course, I got Money Making Mitch, who is helping us out, man. We love it. I right. still want to hear our melodious voices. And if you hear voices you don't know, that's Mitch's. All right. That's Mitch's voice. Okay. That 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 <laughs> voice. That's Mitch. Okay. Money Making Mitch, we call it. One dollar will get you what you want to hear. The podcast form of our show. All right. Patreon.com slash JB and Benny Blue. That hot dollar is going to get that for you, man. Pay that hot dollar. Quit fucking tricking off with these hoes. Okay. You feel me? Burning Bridges Podcast does a live stream Tuesday nights, even though we are on a small hiatus until about uh, the November 11th. All right. Say word to the whole uh, All About the Birds family, the AAT Sports Network. All right. On YouTube. All right. AAT Sports Media Network. Ha ha. We got it, it out. Got all right. Take Follow Timmy. us up. Subscribe. All right. Yep. Give us that love. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Again, tell your friends about us as well. Uh, sponsorship interviews, new music, hate mail, love mail. We don't give a fuck. Holler at us, JB and Benny Blue Review at gmail.com. All right, we will get back with you, man. You know, so we do do this. All right, yes. gentlemen, episode 235, man. I appreciate you guys. All right, we wonderful, love it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work. All right, we'll see you guys next time. All right, enjoy this weekend of football. Yes, great football. That's and right. Watch some college football. This shit's amazing. All right, mm-hmm. reviewers, we love you. Until next week, we are out, baby. Peace.